Welcome, my name is Deborah Walker, and I'm speaking to you from Revival from Down Under, which is a Christian church located in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne, Australia. I'd like to welcome you all here today, and those watching online, delighted to have you with us. And today I'd like to speak on a topic that I've called, Believers Need to Show Compassion for the Lost. I'll say it again. Believers need to show compassion for the lost. And so what does compassion mean? Compassion means to feel sympathy and pity, including in or just inclining oneself to be helpful. And compassion also means to be merciful. And compassion, when we have compassion, it causes action. And compassion is an attribute of God. So I'm opening my King James Bible to Psalms 86. Psalms 86. And we read here in verse 15. But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy and truth. Praise God. And Psalm 114, verse 4. Psalm 114, verse 4. We read here. Sorry, Psalm 111, verse 4. Psalm 111, verse 4. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. And Psalm 145 and verse 8, it says, The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. Praise God. And compassion is also an attribute of Jesus. Jesus came to do his Father's will and Jesus moved with compassion. So I'm turning over to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. And we read here in verse 36. But when he, Jesus, saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. And Matthew chapter 14 and verse 14. And we read here. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion towards them and he healed their sick. And Matthew 15, verse 32, it says here, Then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat and I will not send them away fasting lest they faint in the way. Right, so Jesus moved with compassion and compassion is forgiveness in action. Matthew chapter 18. Just going to read here verses 21 to 27. It says here, then came Peter unto him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? And Jesus says unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and his children and all that he had and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him saying, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. And then we read on verse 28 to the end. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, 
which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when the fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after they had been after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldn't not thou also have compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had passion, compassion on thee? And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise, Shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if you from your heart forgive not every one his brother their trespasses? You know, as believers, Jesus has forgiven us of all our sins and shortcomings. And if we have not freely forgiven others of their trespasses or shortcomings, we will find ourselves in the hands of the tormentors until we do walk in forgiveness. We need to show compassion to others just like Jesus did to us. Amen. And if we turn over to Luke chapter 10, we're going to read about a good Samaritan. Luke chapter 10. I mean, nobody wants to be in the tormentors. Hmm. So we need to forgive from our hearts. Luke chapter 10, and we're going to read here about the Good Samaritan. Luke chapter 10, down in verses 25 to 29, it says here, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted Jesus, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbour as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he willingly, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbour? And let's just read on, verse 30 to 32. And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed leaving him half dead and by chance there came down a certain priest that way and when he saw him he passed by on the other side and likewise a Levite when he was at the place came and looked on him and passed by on the other side in verse 33 to 37, it says here, But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them for the, to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was the neighbour unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said unto him, Well, he that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. He that showed mercy, that word mercy, it actually means compassion. Now the priest, he believed in God. And the Levite, he believed in God. However, it was the Samaritan who acted and showed compassion. And as believers, we are to show compassion to others, even being challenged to go out of our way to reach someone. 
All right, it means stop what we're doing. If we feel led of the Lord, just or as we're led of the Lord, to reach out to others. All right, in we turn over to Luke chapter 19. We're going to read about a man called Zacchaeus. Luke chapter 19, verse 1 and 2. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. So Zacchaeus, he was a tax collector, and he was rich. And tax collectors were notorious for corruption and mishandling money. And Zacchaeus, being he was actually a senior tax collector, he worked for the Roman government. And tax collectors made demands on people, and they usually took more than that was what was correct. And let's read on verse 3 to 6. It says here, And he sought, to, he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up unto a sycamore tree to see him, for he, was, for he, Jesus, was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he saw him. And he said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. Jesus knew Zacchaeus by name. And Zacchaeus, he knew what he was like. And what he had done, and yet Jesus was reaching out to him. And verse 7, And when they saw it, they all murmured. This is the other people around. They all murmured, saying that he, Jesus, was gone to be the guest with a man that is a sinner. And, you know, understandably, Zacchaeus, as a tax collector, he was not a popular person amongst the crowd. And the Amplified for verse 7, it says, and when the people saw it, they all murmured among themselves and indignantly complained. He, Jesus, has gone in to be the guest of and lodge with a man who's devoted to sin and preeminently a sinner. The people, they were really upset that Jesus would be the guest of a sinner rather than a respectable, righteous person. And their attitude even showed their heart. So at Jesus' call, Zacchaeus came down from the tree. And verse 8, and it says, And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Zacchaeus, he called Jesus Lord. Something had taken place in his heart the amplified verse 8 says so then Zacchaeus stood up and solemnly declared to the Lord see Lord the half of my goods I now give by way of restoration to the poor and if I've cheated anyone out of anything I now restore four times as much what a change of heart praise God and verses 9 to 10 and Jesus said unto him this day is salvation come to this house for as much as he also is a son of Abraham, for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. You know, Jesus knew all about Zacchaeus and Jesus looked up and he saw Zacchaeus in the tree and God knows where we are and he knows all about our lives, even if others do not. And Jesus told Zacchaeus, that he desired to come and abide in his house. And Jesus desires to come and abide in our house, in our heart, in our life. All right? He wants to abide. He wants to be with us and us with him. And that day, Zacchaeus responded to Jesus' call. Hallelujah. That day, salvation came to Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus was saved. Where was he saved? In a tree. He got saved in a tree. Jesus can save you wherever you are today. Hallelujah. And so, you know, to respond to Jesus, first we must know that there's sin in our heart. We've got to be honest with ourselves. I'm just going to turn over to Romans chapter 3. 
and verse 10. And we read here and it says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. And the Amplified says, As it is written, none is righteous, just and truthful and upright and conscientious, no, not one. So that includes you and me. Hallelujah. And verse 23, it says here, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have all fallen short of God's standards. And in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, it says, Wherefore, as by one man, speaking of Adam, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all, that all have sinned. The Amplified says, verse 12, Therefore, as sin came into the world through one man, and death as the result of sin, so death spread to all men, no one being able to stop it or to escape its power, because all men sinned. And Romans 6, verse 23, it says, And for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And if we turn over to, back to Acts, chapter 17, and verse 30 to 31, it says, and the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he's appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man, speaking of Jesus, whom he has ordained, wherefore he has given assurance unto all men in that he has raised him from the dead. So we're definitely talking about Jesus. And to repent means we turn away from sin and turn towards God and walk in God's ways. Hallelujah. We leave the old things, the, the things that are unacceptable before God, all the activities, all we, all we perhaps participated in. Let it go. Turn from it. Don't give place to it. Turn from it and follow God's ways. And we read in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19. It says here, Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands ashore, having this seal. The Lord knows them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. All right? So we let go of those activities that are not suitable. And in the example of Zacchaeus, we understand that he experienced repentance, having a change of heart. Firstly, Zacchaeus, he acknowledged and repented of his sins. And then instead of taking from the poor, he became a very generous man towards others, giving half of his wealth to the poor. And secondly, Zacchaeus was willing to make restitution of anything that he had cheated or stolen, even returning four times as much as he had taken. And Zacchaeus showed true fruit of repentance. His life was changed that day and Zacchaeus was grafted into the spiritual seed of Abraham. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Zacchaeus became a disciple of Jesus and Zacchaeus' life was transformed by the power of God's grace, God's undeserved favour to him. And when we get saved, that same change needs to take place in our heart. And then there'll be, it'll be evident to others that know us. Well, wow, what's happened to you? There's a change. You, you look different. You act different. You talk different. There'll be a change. And when people respond to Jesus, then just like Zacchaeus, salvation will come to their house and Jesus will transform their lives. Hallelujah. And through Jesus Christ, they too will be grafted into the spiritual seed of Abraham and they will never be the same. Hallelujah. Because there's nothing to go back to. Leave the past in the past. And God has you where he wants you now to lead you forward. Hallelujah. He's got the plan for every life. And I'm just turning back to Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3. Verse 12 to 13. It says here. 
Luke chapter 3, verse 12 to 13. Then came also publicans, like to Jesus, to be baptized, and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, Exact no more than that which is appointed you. And the Amplified says 12 and 13. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what shall we do? And he said unto them, Exact and collect no more than the fixed amount appointed to you. In other words, stop stealing from the other people. Jesus showed that the other tax collectors what kind of fruit God was looking for, which should reveal their change of heart. They stopped stealing from others. They stopped overquoting. They stopped doing the wrong thing. All right? That's a fruit of change. Hallelujah. And in Matthew chapter 3, verse 3, we read of John the Baptist and what he said in verse 8. And he said, Bring forth therefore fruits, meat, that means worthy of repentance. And the Amplified says, Bring forth fruit that is consistent with repentance. Let your lives prove your change of heart. When a person is truly saved, born again, a change takes place in their heart. They no longer desire to deliberately sin. Their new life in God will reflect this change of heart. Hallelujah. All right. What about compassion for compassion seeks the lost? You know, everyone before they know Jesus is lost in sin until they have an encounter with Jesus Christ. And only Jesus can transform lives, bringing them out of spiritual darkness and bringing them into God's glorious light. Matthew chapter 18. Let's read this. Matthew 18, verse 11 to 14. And we read here, verse 11. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. Right? People are lost in sin. How think you, if a man has a hundred sheep and one of them be gone away, does he not leave the ninety and nine and goeth into the mountains and seeks that which is gone astray? And if so be that he finds it, verily I say unto you, he rejoices more than that sheep, than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. All right. I'm just going to turn to Second Peter 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Peter 3 verse 9. I mean, God's word is very clear. Second Peter 3 verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but he's long suffering to us would, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God is very patient with us. And it says here, long suffering. You know, but we know lies will perish and go to hell if they are not reached. We know that. Scripture says that. And so before being saved, we were all lost in sin and headed for an eternity in hell. And fortunately, we cried out to God or somebody told us about Jesus or somebody invited us to church. And we'll be ever grateful to them because they were bold enough or brave enough to speak to us and invite us to church. And what did we do once we found out about God? We then repented, turned, forsook our sins and received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour. And we now know that Jesus has forgiven us of all our past sins, paying with his life the punishment we deserved. Right? Jesus was without sin, but he took the punishment we deserved. And as believers, we are now saved from spending eternity in a fiery hell. Therefore, we too need to speak to others about Jesus and invite them to church. Hallelujah. Compassion brings deliverance. Let's turn back to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. And we read of Jesus 
and his ministry team. Mark chapter 5, verse 1. And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, in immediately there met him one of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him, no, not with chains because he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. Let's read on verse 6. And when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, the Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Demons recognize truth. Demons recognize light. And demons, they want to stay where they are, if at all possible. They want to have expression in people or animals or situations. But it says he cried out with a loud voice, what have I to do with thee, Jesus? And verse 8, for he said unto him, and what did Jesus say to him? Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Come out, like get out, get out of him. And he asked, what is thy name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him, much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there were nigh thee unto the mountain a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. Demons look for expression, uh, something that's living. Verse 13. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea and they were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country and they went out to see what it was done. And they came to Jesus and see him at, and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind and they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how he befell him, how he was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray like to Jesus to depart out of their coast. <laughs> the pig industry had a change that day, but this man, he was totally set free of sound mind. Hallelujah. And Jesus comes to set people free and... Um, Demons get uncomfortable around light. They're not comfortable. They want to hide. And so let's just turn the light up more. Let's just turn it up. And verse 18 to 20, it says, And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him and that he might be with him. Like the man who was now rescued, delivered, he wanted to be with Jesus. Verse 19, Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but said, Look, Go home to your friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee and has had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him and all men did marvel. <laughs> so this man, he was totally delivered and set free and he was then instructed by Jesus to go and tell all the others what Jesus had done for him. Hallelujah. And he went into the city, into the places... And many people would have known that man. He'd been probably in that condition for many, many years. And here he was, a changed man, happy and willing just to, Jesus said, go and tell them. So he just did. He just went into the places and told the people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, you know, Jesus has given us authority to go and tell others to deliver and to heal and so on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 10. Let's turn back there. Verses 7 to 8. This is what Jesus said. And as you go, he didn't say as you stay home. He said, as you go, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, 
freely give. I'll read it from the Amplified, verses 7 and 8. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Freely, without pay, you have received. Freely, without charge, give. Hallelujah. This scripture says, as you go. And we, the believers, are to go and tell others. Let's turn over to Romans chapter 10. Verses 11 to 15. For the scripture says this, Whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, but the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Or how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Hallelujah. As believers, it's our responsibility to speak to others, to share with others about Jesus Christ. And it's the work of the Holy Spirit to convict people of their sin and their need for a saviour. And so believers are to show compassion. Let's turn to Jude, just the book just before Revelation, right at the back. Jude, it's only one chapter. And verses 20 to 23, it says here. But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. I'll read it from the Amplified, verse 20. It says, But you, beloved, build yourselves up, founded on your most holy faith, make progress, rise like an edifice, higher and higher, praying in the Holy Spirit. Guard and keep yourselves in the love of God. Expect and patiently wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, which will bring you unto eternal life and refute so as to convict some who will dispute with you and as some have mercy who were waver in doubt. Strive to save others, snatching them out of the fire and others take pity but with fear, loathing even the garment spotted by the flesh and polluted by their sensuality. You know, we're to reach out to others and we are to have compassion towards others because we know if they're not saved, we know where they will spend eternity. It's a fiery hell and God's, that God doesn't want people to go there. He wants people to make it to heaven. Hallelujah. And we turn back to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 17 and 18, it says here. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. And down in verses 23 to 25, it says, But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews, it's a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks, it's foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. And verse 26 to 29, it says here, for you see your calling, brethren. Did you know you're called? The call's gone out. You see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world, and things 
which are despised has God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Praise God. And I'll read it from the Amplified. Just It does open it up. Verse 26. For simply consider your own core brethren. Not many of you were considered to be wise according to human estimations and standards. And many, not many influential and powerful, not many of high and noble birth. No, for God selected, deliberately chose what in the world is foolish to put the wise to shame and what the world calls weak to put the strong to shame. And God also selected, deliberately chose what in the world is lowborn and insignificant and branded and treated with contempt, even the things that are nothing that he might depose and bring to nothing the things that are, so that no mortal man should have pretense for glory and boast in the presence of God. All right, God does the choosing. God looks on our hearts. He does the choosing. So God chose you for his purpose. It, scripture says in John, you've not chosen, Jesus said, you've not chosen me, but I've chosen you. But it's up to us to respond to him. And if we turn back to Mark 16, Matthew, Mark 16, we've been commissioned to go. Jesus said in Mark 16, verse 15, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The Amplified says, and he said unto them, go into all the world and preach and publish openly the good news, the gospel to every creature of the whole human race. Hallelujah. To preach is not just behind a pulpit. To preach is to share, communicate and to talk to others about God. We need to share that sin separates a person from going to heaven. However, God loves them and that Jesus died to take the punishment for their sin. Their part is to believe this and to ask God to forgive them of their sins and then walk in God's ways. Hallelujah. God desires to use you. Hallelujah. Just going to look at a couple of things. What could hinder us from obeying that verse to go into all the world? Because Jesus said for us to go. He wants us to go. He's exhorting us to go. But you know what stops us sometimes from going? Well, number one could be we're just too busy. You know, we're all busy and we have responsibilities in this life. Even so, Jesus was not too busy to come and save us and even have someone speak to us. Reaching others needs to be brought to the forefront of our lives. Um, another excuse could be pride. You know, what will pe people think of me if I say something? Let's turn to Philippians chapter 2. Verses 5 to 8, it says here, verse 5, Let this mind be in you which also was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. You know, Jesus, he was almost naked when he was nailed to the cross. You know, and God hates pride. And we need to humble ourselves and make ourselves of no reputation. Another excuse could be fear, you know, uh, but for, you know, for us, we're to fear God, be reverential fear of God and not man. It says in 2 Timothy, I'll just turn to it, 2 Timothy Chapter 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. And we read here, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. All right, so God's not given us a spirit of fear. So we don't have to fear what people think, what people 
We don't have to fear people. All right? Fear is not coming from God. Hallelujah. We're to walk in faith where people are faith. Uh, some people might be uncertain what to say. Let's turn back to Mark chapter 13. And verse 11. And we read here. And this is what Jesus says. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what you shall speak. Neither do you premeditate. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak. For it is not you that speak, but the Holy Ghost. You know, we are people of faith and God's going to give us the words to say when we need it. All right, we're just going to believe God. Hallelujah. Uh, some people have an excuse. They uh, make assumptions for others thinking, oh, you know, that person wouldn't want to know. They wouldn't want to hear the gospel. Like we could look at something. Well, they don't want to know about God. They don't want to know about God. You know, but what about us? <laughs> we perhaps didn't know that we needed to know about God, but aren't we grateful? It was good news to our ears, right? Someone went out of their way to talk to us about God. So let's not just assume people don't want to know. All right. Praise God. But also, too, in this, we just need to be led to God. Just to, God will just prompt us to who to reach. You know, it just does. Um, some people may not have the, ha the power of the Holy Spirit. And it says in Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Because Jesus said, I'm going back to the Father, but I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. And he's going to be with you and he's going to be in you. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And Jesus said, but you shall receive the power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. So wherever you live or your suburb or your state or your nation or overseas, God wants to use you to be his witness. And so... Uh, as believers, if we've, if we've received the Holy Spirit, we've been, been empowered by God to be witnesses. Um, another excuse could just be straight out, just a lack of compassion for others. Just all about themselves, never outreaching to others. And, but the scripture says, well, let's just turn to it, Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5 and verse 5. And it says here, and hope makes not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So this scripture says that God has given us, he's shed abroad the Holy Ghost, his love in our hearts. And it's God's love in us that causes us to move with compassion. All right. Hallelujah. And some are just make excuses. You know, we just need to stop making excuses and start praying and planning how, when and where to reach others. How, when, where to reach others. We know every day, you know, you thank the Lord for the day. You commit the day to him and be willing to be used of God wherever you're going. Everybody usually leaves, leaves their house every day. You're going somewhere, even if it's a um, shopping center or going to work or on a bus or a train. Uh, petrols, wherever. You're going somewhere and you're going to meet people. So I'm just encouraging you just to be sensitive who God would have you to speak to. So the next thing is to take action. So number one, I would always say pray. Like I just said, commit the day to the Lord. You know, ask the Lord for wisdom. You know, you don't want to, we never want to Bible bash people. We just want to be led of the Lord, how to reach, speak to people, how to reach people. You know, ask the Lord to go before us and to prepare the hearts of those we're to speak to. You know, ask the Lord to open our eyes to see others and to bring people across our pathway. You'll be, I, I, I know it myself, I'll be in a shopping centre and I'll just look across and it's just like that one. Just God wants to use you to reach others. You need to be willing to go. You know, as Christians, it's our responsibility to share the gospel with others. And obedience is evidence of our salvation. Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commands. Jesus said to go. So we need to be willing to go. 
Um, and we can be friendly, <laughs> friendly. We're in the world. Come on, we're in the world. And we can say, you know, good morning with a smile. Some people just say morning. <laughs> Whatever happened to good morning? <laughs> we can say good morning and have a smile on our face. Like you've got to walk the walk. And if you're down in the dumps <laughs> at the workplace or at the shops and you're down in the dumps, well, people think, well, you're not doing much better than me. <laughs> we've got to give, we've got to be shining, shining examples of believers so that people will want what we have. And his name's Jesus. We can hand out a little gospel track or put it in someone's mailbox. You know, there's different ways. And um, glorify God, you know, by telling others about God and even what he's done in our lives, we glorify God and we continue to walk in obedience to him. You know, no one can take away from you your testimony because it's your testimony. It's not made up. It's your testimony. They can't say nay or yay to it because it's your testimony. And sometimes if you just get an opportunity, you know, my life was just a terrible mess. And then, you know, I came to the Lord and my life now, I've got peace, joy, direction. I know where I'm going. I'm headed for heaven. And my life's just changed for the better. And so you've got a testimony. You've got a story to tell. And, you know, and we can sow a seed by asking a question to sow a seed or a scripture. You know, it says in 1 Corinthians 3, 3 6, uh, Paul says, I planted a polis watered, but God gave the interest. You can just sow a seed and that could be just a phrase. For example, a question. You could just ask a question. Have you ever thought about life after death? Most people don't want to, but it gets people thinking. Um, are you afraid of dying? If, you know, are you afraid of dying? You know, just if it, you know, just I mean, it'll take a bit of a conversation to get to that place, possibly. But just be led of God. Um, have you ever thought about if you will go to heaven? Um, and I use this one. If this was your last day, do you think you will go to heaven? I just dropped that one. And um, or have you ever thought about what happens after you die? We're just prompting people to start thinking about eternal things. And Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. We have good news. They're going, if they're not reached, they're going to hell. But Jesus Christ is the gift of God so they can make it to heaven. And, you know, and we need to look for opportunities to speak up, to speak to others so they can go to heaven and not hell. Hallelujah. So what should we do? I'd like to turn to this one. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. And verse 24. And we read here. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. All right. Our part is to tell people about God's law using the Ten Commandments. That's the law. Most people have heard of the Ten Commandments. And tell people about the Ten Commandments and his great love for them by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to pay the penalty for their sin. And it's the work of the Holy Spirit to convict people of their sins and convince them of a need for a saviour. Amen. All right. For example, just recently, a couple of testimonies. Number one, I had a person ring me at my home, home line, and um, wanting to change or uh, sell me an electric hot water service instead of a gas hot water service. So I listened to him politely. I didn't just say, forget it and hang up. No, he's, he's ringing me. So I'm going to listen to his story. Listen to the story. And he's saying all this. And then politely, I said, well, actually, I've recently bought a gas hot water service. So I'm not ready to change it over. And he said, oh, OK, he understood. I said, now, may I just ask you a question? He said, yes. <laughs> and I said, if this was your last day and you took your last breath, would you go to heaven? And I heard the gasp on the phone. <gasps> And I waited and he said, well, yes. And I said, ah, oh, and uh, why do you say that? And he said, um, 
because I'm a good person. And then I just launched in. I said, well, you know, have you ever, have you ever told a lie? Well, yeah, most people do. He says, hmm, have you ever taken something you didn't ask permission for? And he said, mm-hmm, yeah, I guess. Um, what about have you ever used the Lord's name in vain? Like, you know, as a swear word, Jesus Christ? Well, yes, he says. <laughs> and what about uh, looking at a lady with lust in your heart? And he said, well, well, yeah. And I said, well, according to God's standards, his Ten Commandments, you've just failed four. <laughs> and God's holy and pure. And I said, and none of us are um, acceptable before God in our own standards because God had, has high standards. And I said, but I just want you to know God loves you and he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. And, and if you'll call out to him, he wants to forgive you of your sins and, um, you know, and you can go to heaven instead of going to a fiery hell. Huh. So and I said, look, that's all I was going to say to you. So, um, you know, I hope to meet you in heaven. And he just said to me, well, I hope to meet you. <laughs> and he hung up. Would you, do you know, a week later, that same man coincidentally rang me again because his name was Aaron. And I said, Aaron, this is Deborah. You rang me the other week. And, um, and I said, I was the one that spoke to you about God and going to heaven. Ah, oh, yes, he says. <laughs> and I said, now, don't forget, you need to call out to Lord and talk to him. And uh, I said, and, and you already know I don't need an electric hot water service. So thank you very much for the call. <laughs> Hang up. All right. The other day I was somewhere and this man, young man was serving me. His name was Caleb. And early in the conversation, I said, oh, Caleb, that's a Bible name. All right, so then he's serving me and packing stuff. And I said, and I thought, well, and I just felt to do it. Like sometimes I, I can be around people and not say something, but sometimes I do. I just really do. And I'm sure it's God's timing. He knows people's timing. Perfect. And I just said, Caleb, you know, same thing. And, and it's really, I got it from Ray Comfort. There's a ministry out there called Ray, his name's Ray Comfort. And he has a really wonderful way, technique of reaching out to people and getting past questions and so forth. So if you know of him or if you don't know of him, looking up Ray Comfort Ministries. It's called Living Waters, probably is the name of the ministry, but his name is Ray Comfort. Anyway, this Caleb, I said, so Caleb, and he's just packing my stuff. I said, Caleb, if this was your last day and you took your last breath, would you make it to heaven? And he looks at me and he said, well, yes. I said, ah, oh, and why do you say that? And he's still packing. And I said, um, he says, because oh, I'm a good person. I said, you're a good person. I said, ah, oh. so let me just ask you. Caleb, have you ever told a lie or a white lie to anyone? Well, yes, he says. And I said, well, that would make you a liar. <laughs> I said, Caleb, and he just stayed with me. He didn't say, oh, you know, he stayed with me because I knew God was in it. And I said, now, Caleb, have you ever taken something without asking permission? Like just, you know, taken something. Yes. I said, well, that would make you a thief. And then I said, um, have you ever used the Lord's name in vain, like Jesus Christ or Christ Almighty or whatever? And he said, mm-hmm, yep. And I said, well, that's blasphemy. And I said, have you ever looked at a woman with lust in your heart? Definitely, he says. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, God says that's like committing adultery in your heart. And I said, so... Caleb, that's only four out of God's 10 commandments. So you've already failed. Because all 10, we need to, you know, all 10. And I said, but Caleb, the good news is that, you know, God loves you. And I'll just say this here quickly. You know, all my years before I got saved, no one ever told me that God loved me. And if you can just tell people that God loves them, and he sent Jesus to die for them. That is a powerful, powerful uh, seed to drop. But anyway, I just said to Caleb, now God loves you. And because, you know, you've disqualified, you've automat automatically disqualified going to heaven. But if you'd like to go to heaven, you need to believe in Jesus Christ. He died for you. He took the punishment of your sin. And if you call out to him and ask him to forgive you of your sins, he will. And um, he wants you to make it to heaven. And by then he'd just about finished. So I said, look, I, I'll, I'll leave you with that. There's other people coming. And I said, um, 
I'll probably just finish with a God bless you, and off I went. But that Caleb, we've been praying for Caleb, been praying for Aaron. You know, God does special things in different lives for timing. So just encourage you just to be willing, just to be willing. And look, a person on the end of a phone, chances are you're never going to meet them. So that's a safe way to talk about, talk to people about the Lord. And in a shopping centre, you know, perhaps in a shopping centre where you're not normally known. <laughs> if you're in a shopping centre where no one knows you, just I could say hit them and run, drop a seat and run, you know, just if you're not, if there's, if there's not much opportunity, but just drop a little seed, you know. So praise God. So praise God. All right. So just the summary here. Let's turn over to James chapter five. James chapter five and verse 20. It says here, let him know that he which converts the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. And I'd like to turn back to Proverbs chapter 11 because God will forgive all those sins. Like they're all under the blood. They just need to turn to him. Hallelujah. And Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 30. And it says here, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life and he that wins souls is wise. And the Amplified says, the fruit of the uncompromising righteous is a tree of life. And he who is wise captures human lives for God as a fisher of men. He gathers and receives them for eternity. Isn't that wonderful? And Matthew 4, Matthew chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4. And it says here in verse 19, and Jesus said unto them, Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. All right. God wants us to reach out to people. Hallelujah. All right. Question. If you saw a blind person using a white stick walking along the top of a cliff and you knew that there was a 10,000 meter drop and he's walking towards it. Would you call out and try and stop him? He's blind. He's got the walking stick. You know he's blind. And he's walking towards the edge of the cliff. Would you call out? Of course you would. And so would I. And it's that simple about reaching out to others. If we do not speak up that night, they may die. We don't know anybody's last day. And it could be that last day and they do go to hell. So as Christians, we are really grateful that we are on the pathway to heaven. And if we died tonight, we would go to heaven. But what about our relatives, our friends, our work colleagues, others we meet in public? They are spiritually blind. And we need the same kind of compassion for these people as we would for the blind man. And we also need to have God's compassion and urgency in our heart as thousands of people die every day across the world and they go straight to hell. And God desires to use you, you, me, to reach out to others. And sincerely, reaching out to others is the responsibility of every believer and shows our obedience to God. And I'm just doing final scripture is John 14. John 14. Oh. Verse 15. And Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And the Amplified says, if you really love me, you will keep, obey my commands. So someone is waiting on your obedience to go. Why? Because the unsaved need rescuing from going to hell. Meanwhile, speaking to others has nothing to do with your age, your gender, your occupation or nationality. Children can reach out to others. Teenagers can reach out to others. Doesn't matter about your age. God wants to use you. Praise God. So may I encourage you to stir yourself up and be bold and be strong for the Lord your God is with you. 
And finally, sorry, it is finally Mark chapter 16. This is the last one. Mark 16. Mark 16. And we read what Jesus said for us to do. Mark 16, verse 15. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So in obedience, let's go and reach out to someone today. And everyone said, Amen. <music>